In this video, I'm going to show you the top three ways that you can scrape any website inside of any 10 in just a matter of minutes. I'll show you exactly the fastest way and the most scalable way in which one you should probably use. And in case we haven't met, my name is Michele. And over the past 12 months, I've helped over 40 businesses implement AI and automations and taught over 20,000 people in the process, all starting with zero technical knowledge. With that being said, let's dive in. All right, so before we get to the actual method, let's talk about scraping. So when someone says, I wanna scrape a website, what they mean is that they want to go inside a domain, a public domain, right, which is accessible, and they want to extract all this information right here. Now, if you don't know, each website is actually, if I go to inspect, it's consisted of all this code. Now, luckily we don't have to know any of this, right? But just know that this is called HTML. So HTML is a thing that websites are written in, which allows it to have an image, have this button that's red, have this video, have this number, and so on. It makes websites look pretty. And so when we say scrape, we're scraping all the information here, but realistically we're scraping this, right? We are scraping, if I go to inspect, this code, which you can then use to send emails, to maybe reply to messages, maybe to customize a message based on their website and so on. And so that's what scraping websites mean. Now, the first way is using a HTTP request. Now I covered this node in much more detail in my API 101 fundamentals video, which you can check out here. But right here, we introduced to two different fields, the method and the URL. So the URL in this case would literally just be the website of the actual thing, which is in this case, jmsolutions2s.com. And the method in this case is either get, delete, add, options, patch, post, put. Now, these are all methods that we use when we make a request. A request just means we're saying, hey, server, can you do something for us and give us back the information? In this case, we have to use get because we want to get information. So now all I have to do is put get, put the URL and leave authentication as none and leave all of this blank. And if I press execute step, you can see here that it's going inside the website and it's extracting all the HTML, the whole code, which you can see here, which is very, very, very long, right? And this right here is what's behind this. We just extracted this code right here inside this, right? Which you can then use to do something else. Now, the only problem here is that the HTTP gives us the whole HTML, which is way too large for us to feed it into maybe an LLM like OpenAI to maybe generate emails or generate messages. So what we do here is turn the HTML, which is the whole long code of the website into text, which is now readable to someone. So I can go here to plus, I can look for HTML uh, right here. So work with HTML, I can press on this and I can do extract HTML content, which means that it's extracting the text from the actual thing. And now we can extract HTML content. The source data will be JSON because this is JSON. Um, well, like this, this is all JSON. And if you're wondering what JSON is, video up here. Uh, and then the JSON property will be data because this is called the data. And the key, let's call this website text. And let's do body. And now if I execute this step, I can see that we actually get the text of the website. So we got from the HTML that we got, which is just a ton of stuff, which is all of this, right? All these letters and colors and images and videos, which you typically don't want. We just want the text. We're saying, okay, just extract the text from here. And as you can see, this is much shorter than this one, which is way longer than this, right? And now this is something that you can add to an AI for it to draft emails to do something else. And we also use this node right here to be able to set up API requests. Now, API request, I actually mentioned this in my API 101 video, which you can find up here. If you go to any of them right here on app event, there will be tons of apps, right? But not everything is here, right? And so how do you automate something within an app that you can't find the app here, right? And so let's say I wanna use Pandadoc, but Pandadoc is not here, is not listed here. But I know for a fact that you can actually automate things within Pandadoc, which is where we have to make our own app using a HTTP request. And then we typically use the HTTP node when the website is static, no JavaScript, which means that it doesn't actually change over time. And you're testing or building a simple automation. So we typically use this for testing or to build something quick. Now the pros is that this is fast and it's free, completely free. There's no extra setup or accounts needed. You just literally need to put a URL and run it. And it works great for APIs or plain pages. So APIs, like I mentioned, is just the way that softwares talk to each other. So if you can't find a software in N10, you have to set up your own sort of app to make it happen, which is where you use a HTTP node. And plain pages, again, it's this. The website is static. So it's just that, just the text. It doesn't change over time. It's the same. Now, the cons of this is that it gives messy and unreadable HTML. So as you saw here, 
This right here gives me the whole HTML, which isn't really readable, which is why we have to use something like this. But if it wasn't for this, then we would just have to deal with a HTML that makes no sense to anybody. Then in terms of web scraping, it can handle JavaScript heavy sites. So sites that are changing over time that are a bit more complex, it cannot handle those. And it's very, very easy to get IP blocked if scraped a lot. So if you scrape this website continuously over and over again, you will get blocked, right? There's a good chance you will get blocked. And on top of that, we can actually scrape every website. So if I go to my LinkedIn here and I just copy the URL and I paste it here inside, LinkedIn isn't a platform that you can actually scrape on a public level, right? So in this case, what this did is that it just literally went to LinkedIn. It just scraped this, it tried to scrape it. And LinkedIn said, no, we have a wall between you and me. And the wall is an encryption. It's a password that we have to go through, which is why we can't use HTTP requests for everything. All right, so the next method is using Firecrawl. So if you just type Firecrawl right here, you can go to Firecrawl, the web data API for AI. And this website, the server is great if you just want to scrape websites, that's what it's meant to do. And so when you make an account, just go to your dashboard and you are able to then go to API keys, copy this key. And then if you go back to Neden, you can download this. So you can go to fire crawl. You have to install the node. So there'll be a button here that says install. And then you have different options right here. But when you press any options that say scrape a URL and get its content, you will get introduced to this page right here. All you have to do is connect your account by adding the API key press save. And once this is connected, you now have the operation, which you have to pick, which is what is the action that we're actually doing. And there's different options. So the first one is search and optionally scrape search results. Now, what this means is that you're asking Google to look something up for me. Then we have map a website and get URLs. So this goes inside a website and gets all the URLs, like the about section, the services, the homepage, all that stuff, all the URLs that you might need. Then we have scrape a URL and get its content which is literally just scraping the URL and getting its content. So going inside the URL and getting everything back, so the text. And I'll show you how this is different from the HTTP that we just used. Crawl a website is a bit more advanced than this right here, um, but it still scrapes websites. Then we have get crawl status, which is you being able to get the status of whether this is done or not. So you send a request, you say, hey, can you just go inside this website and get absolutely everything that you, that you have? And this is saying, okay, the status is approved, everything's good you can move forward. Then we have extract data. So in case we want to tell it, hey, go inside the website and extract the email, extract whatever it is. Then we have get extract status because the way that these work is that you send the request at first and then you get the status. So send the request and you get the status and then custom API calls, which is not going to, in case you want to do some more complex stuff. So in this case, we're just going to use scrape a URL and get its content. So I'm just going to add my website, go here, let me delete this. It looks crazy. Um, and I'm going to press execute step. And what this will now do, if you go to schema, is it will actually extract the text. So in comparison to the HTTP node that we just used, this doesn't give us the HTML, but it automatically does the job that these two do, right? It goes inside the website and it gives me the text, not the HTML. So it's condensed. So you can see here, if I zoom out, this is the text of the website. Plus we also get the metadata, so we get the description, and we get a bunch more stuff that we can use for whatever it is. And bear in mind that this fire crawl, I believe it's free. Uh, they give you free credits every month. So you have about 525 credits. I believe that each scrape is about two, two credits per scrape. But as I mentioned, if you want to do something more complex, you can also extract the data, which allows you to put a prompt saying, Hey, can you extract this for me from the website? And then you can put a URL here and that extracts the exact thing that you asked it to extract. But in theory, what this would look like is you have the URL. So you would scrape it, it will do this whole thing. Then you add the markdown, which is just the way that you write English for computers per se. And then you add this to an AI step to extract the data that you want to extract maybe what the offer is of the company, uh, who are they targeting or whatever use case you have. Now, Firecrawl is great if you want a clean, readable website content. As you mentioned, we are doing the job of these two just by using one node. You're also able to scrape modern uh, slash dynamic websites, which are websites that change over time, which is great. And if you want data safe from bans and errors. So there isn't really any IP banning like HTTP because behind this node right here, there's a ton of code that happens in the backend, which allows you to be more safe when you scrape. And the pros here is handles JavaScript sites easily, like I mentioned, so modern and dynamic websites. It returns clean markdown or JSON, which is not the full HTML, but the thing that we actually want from the website, which is the text. It uses random proxies, avoid bans. Uh, so when you hear proxies, it just means that 
is like sort of some things in the back end, in the code behind this website, uh, when it actually scrapes, that make it safe for you to actually do it, right? So you don't actually get banned. And can map, search, or extract data at scale. So this is scalable, much more scalable than this, because this only works for a few sites and then you get banned or something bad happens. But in this case, because it's safer, it's also more scalable over time. The only cons with this is that it needs an API key plus a small cost per crawl. So as we saw, this is not free. I mean, it is free, but if you want to go above this, then you're going to have to pay. And I believe that if I go to the website, I go to pricing, then we have per credits, right? So we have 500 credits for free. And if you want 3000 credits, you have to pay $16 a month, 16 euros a month, which is not bad, um, but it only depends of how many credits you need. Right? And each scrape takes about two credits. You can scrape about 1,500 websites um, using 3,000 credits, depending on the website and depending how complex it is. And then it's slightly slower than a raw HTTP request. So this takes a bit more time uh, just because there's more stuff in the back end. As you can see here, if I go to execute step one, two, well, actually pretty fast. Uh, and here, if I just go to Gen Solutions, it's much faster, right? Like maybe half the time. And the third method is Apify. Now I've made a full masterclass on Apify, exactly how it works and different use cases that you can use with Apify. You can check it out up here. But if I go to Apify platform, apify.com, the way that I would describe this is the Amazon for scrapers. So just like on Amazon, people sell something and others buy something. There's consumers and there's sellers. In this case, the consumers is us who are going inside the platform to say, hey, I wanna script some Instagram profiles. And on the seller side, it's like, hey, I just built a scraper that you can use to scrape Instagram profiles, but you have to pay me or you have to do some sort of exchange of, of credits or something like that. And so when you make an account on Apify, you can go to console. And important thing here is that on the bottom, you see that we have eight gigabytes of RAM, which is memory, and we have $5 for free every single month. Now, if you do the math here, depending on which scraper you use, it's free, right? Depending on how much you use it. And so this is great because it allows us to scrape tons more stuff than something like Firecrawl or definitely HTTP, because now we have the ability to scrape Google Maps, Facebook, TikTok, tons of stuff that you just simply can't do with Firecrawl or HTTP. But in this case, let's just do the website content crawler, right? So the first step is actually connecting and its end to Apify. So I'm gonna to go to the run an actor, which you can find Apify here. You can do run an actor, actions, run an actor. And by the way, actor is just the, the scraper. So we call them scraper. Like the Amazon product is called in this case, an actor. The way to connect it is go here, press plus, then go back here, go to settings, I believe. Yes. And then go to API and integrations and you can copy this, bring it back and go to API key and save and name it whatever you want, press save. And now you have your account connected. And now the resource is actor. The action that we're taking is run an actor. The actor source is recently run actors. And the actor in this case, you can choose, um, well, in this case, you wanna use the website content crawler, which you can find right here. You can go to Apify store, go to website. Well, in this case, you can see it here. And let's say you didn't see there. You can go website content crawler, press here. And now, you can start using this scraper right away. And like I mentioned, this scraper, what it is, it's something that, well, in this case was built by Apify itself, the platform, but usually we have random people like, let me show you. We have Compass, we have API Dojo, we have Clockworks, we have Curious Coder and some other people who actually build these scrapers and make money out of them. So as you can see here, the pricing is pay per usage. So you pay per run, but since we have $5 of free credits, each run, I believe, is a few cents. We'll see when we actually run it, um, but it's very, very cheap. So in this case, you just want to test it. Just press start. This will be an automatic thing that will be there, a default. When you press start, what this will look like is that it will start running. we will show you that it's running. And here it will show you the results, the request, the amount of usage that it takes to script the website and the duration and also the date. And down here, you can see the actor getting the data. Now, an important thing here is that we currently just used Apify's platform to scrape. But ideally, we wanna use it within our automations. And so right here, we can see that we have the full text of the website, which is great. And now in order for us to set this scraper up, all we have to do is go back to NA10. I can choose the website content crawler. And now we need an input JSON. So an input JSON is something that you can find right here. And right here, there's two different ways that you can run it. The first way is manual, where you can start adding the URL of the website, 
the different types of crawlers, which is optional, but you have different types. So adopt the switching between browser and raw HTTP, which by the way, it makes no sense to anybody. And then we can use the crawler type, which is the type of thing or the type of way that we actually crawl the website. Crawl just means extract all the data that you can then apply to the actual scrape. And then there's also stuff like crawler settings, HTML processing, output settings, and run options, which are all things that we can change. But to keep it simple, we will not change anything. All we have to do is go to JSON, which is the way that we actually use this in the automation. All I have to do is copy this. I have to go back to any then. I can delete this and I can paste the URL, or not the URL, the JSON. And now all I have to do is change the website, right, with the URL. In this case, let's leave this right here. I can now press execute step. If I go back, I can see in the runs, this is now running. So we have a new thing running automatically, right, without going into the actual platform, which is how you use it within your automations. All right, so I realized there was an issue here. And the issue was that I actually exceeded my memory, even though it doesn't say here, but I've been using this a lot more than you think. Um, but if you're new to this, you will not have that problem. So I'm gonna sign out and log in with a different account. So what I did here is I just changed the account because uh, the other one was maxed out. And now the actor is running, so we can wait for the information here. All right, so I just finished running and we get this data right here. As you can see, I told you that we don't actually get the text of the website. What we get is something called a default data set ID, which I can copy. And then, well, not copy, but go to the next step. So let me just pin this, press P, so I don't have to rerun this again. And right here, I can go to schema. I can look for the default data set ID, which is right here. And I can give it as well. And make sure that your connection is correct. And now if I press execute step, I can see that I have the whole JSON here. And down here, I have the text of the website, which I can then use for the next steps. Now you should only be using Apify really when you're doing large scale scraping or complex projects like LinkedIn, Amazon, because Apify is known not for scraping just websites, but for scraping Instagram profiles or TikTok profiles or Facebook or LinkedIn. If I go to here, LinkedIn, a platform that natively does not want to get scraped, um, you can see that we can scrape it using this stuff, using these different scrapers. And we have tons of options as well. And also when you need to use pre-built scrapers or browser automation, because these right here are all pre-built scrapers that we can use to do whatever it is that we wanna do. And we have a big variety of different scrapers that we can use for different use cases. Like I mentioned, social media is a big one, uh, which is where we use Apify for a lot of these things, uh, but it's tons more as well. Now the pros is that we have a huge library of pre-made scrapers, actors. It's cloud-based, so there's no setup. It handles login-based or complex sites, which is very good, like LinkedIn, something that with a HTTP node, you just can't do because there's an encryption, there's a password. And so what they have is they have proxies that go around the password. They make it seem like they're an actual user to then scrape the data. And the cons is that it can get quite expensive at scale, depending on the scraper that you use, depending on the actor. More setup steps for custom logic and overkill for small, simple scrapes, right? So if you're using something really, really simple, you're better off going with something like Firecrawl, which is simple, it's very easy to set up, and it's just made for websites. Now, if you want the full template so you can import it into your own account, then check out the first thing down below. You can go to my school community, you can go to the classroom section, the templates vault, and you'll see the latest video, which in this case would have a download N10 automation blueprint. You can tap on this, you can download it, import it into your own account. And if you have no clue how to do that, you also have a tutorial right here showing you exactly how to do it. And if you apply and you get in, you also get access to our one and only automations one-on-one -on -one course, which is a very comprehensive course that takes a real beginner in AI automation to someone who's actually able to build automations for themselves and for other businesses. All right, so I hope now you understand how web scraping works within N10 and just how easy it is to set up. And if you want to work with me one-to-one -to, -one to help you start and scale your AI automation agency to 10K a month profit, then check out the first thing down below, which gives you a full video of the full program that we just launched. We've had hundreds of people reach out to us to join. Uh, so there's only a few spots left for the end of the month. So check it out down below. And if you want to dive deeper into web scraping, then check out this video up here where I show you how I built a full Instagram parasite system using N10 and Apify. With that being said, I hope you found value from this video. I don't see you in the next one.